In the 10 days after the 2016 presidential election, 867 hate incidents occurred across the United States, contributing to a major fraction of the incidents committed within one year. And while hate incidents are surely not new to the United States, a spike like this after a major transition of power should be extremely alarming to citizens of all walks of life. After three presidential election cycles in a row, the nation has experienced thousands of hate crimes. The elections of Barack Obama and Donald Trump have been attributed to an increase in hate sentiments and radical ideologies, particularly by white nationalist groups and a splinter of their movement, now commonly called the alt-right, who campaigned for a separate homeland for whites, among other acts highly reminiscent of their old brand predecessors, white supremacists. However, some other underlying reasons for these hate incidents may be a bit more complex, embodied within a concatenation of polarized politics, economic downfalls, and certainly the implicit politically correct culture that's taken hold of the American public in recent years. That can buy an old jalopy or pay for its gas, or cover the tab on a big Saturday night. Political correctness, or the notion of avoiding speech or action that may marginalize or insult communities and individuals, especially ones that experience discrimination with higher frequencies, has been floated around in the general public as a way to reduce civil conflicts between the ever-growing diverse classes of America. However, some question if PC culture can even provide a legitimate solution to hate crimes and speech. Right now, it appears that PC culture has not dramatically pushed hate crime statistics into negative trends within the U.S. The number of reported hate crimes increased 6%, a number that does not account for the many hate crimes that may go unreported out of shame or fear. Since the election, intimidation and harassment has grown dramatically nationwide. The number of hate crime incidents doubling since last Friday. The increase in racism, crimes based Violent on bias and xenophobia. Like this could stuff. just be the beginning. They go after as, as, as a social Donna. event. To 400 incidents in the past week. Oh, hate 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 like the Ku Klux Klan or skinheads. Stop it. These incidents average roughly 9,455 victims per year. Of these incidents, the FBI finds that primary attacks and discrimination follow along racial, ethnic, religious, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic lines. The FBI and Southern Poverty Law Center independently determine that of those perpetrators, many are influenced by or are in some way affiliated with white nationalist or alt-right groups, showing anti-non-white, anti-immigrant, anti-LGBT, anti-Jewish, and anti-Muslim sentiments, among others. For us as Europeans, it is only normal again when we are great again. While political correctness seemed to be initially intended as a way to mitigate hate crimes and speech, many groups, including white nationalists, feel that their First Amendment rights are being stripped as a result. Nowadays, many nationalist groups take to the web in order to express their views and maintain better anonymity, because in the words of Jared Taylor, Only a tiny fraction of the alt-right can afford to be open about their views, because if you dissent publicly, you can be fired from your job, kicked out of school. In this way, PC culture was intended to undercut their prominence and force groups into a negligible existence. For instance, in 2016, major tech companies like Twitter spurred controversy for suspending alt-right accounts. The temporary removal of Richard B. Spencer, the head of the National Policy Institute and famed leader responsible for creating the term alt-right and attempting to modernize white supremacist movements was a source of significant concern. His removal uncovered the fine line between free speech and the ethics of social media and threatened not only the alt-writers' way of life, but also their authority and position in society. Alt-right activists often express that these actions are hypocritical because they deny rights to groups based on their beliefs, which is supposedly what political correctness protects. By vilifying PC culture and calling for fair treatment and freedom of speech, the alt-right has effectively utilized an oppression by the establishment narrative to broadcast their platform to massive and increasingly sympathetic audiences. As Spencer himself put it, The alt-right has gained a great deal of ground precisely because we are provocative and precisely because, to, to use bad language, we don't give a 
That is why, if Americans give the alt-right a spotlight by enforcing political correctness and attempting to shame away their opinions, they are unknowingly instilling heroic passions within a movement and evolving hate into an organized institution with greater support and vindication. Irrespective of our differences, coarseness is not the way to achieve civility in our society. And that work is not just about enforcing the law. It's about staying true to our highest ideals and most cherished principles. It's also part of our, our civic good. And it's about giving real meaning to our shared belief that all people are created equal. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Just all go get drunk. <laughs>